Hi everyone. Oh, it's been a really long time. I know that. Sorry about that. Uh, yep, life's been getting in the way. Anyway, I did promise that I would show you how I was going to make the cover. So this will be spliced, a bunch of spliced videos because obviously there's going to be drawing time and all that kind of jazz. So anyway, um, I had gutted a book and I believe it's a one inch spine. Yeah, just, yeah, it's about a one inch spine. And originally it was going to be big enough. <laughs> it isn't now. So <laughs> I'll show you my uh, signatures are definitely more than one inch. So I have to, <clears throat> if I want to use this, um, make this bigger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this right in the middle. Or as close to the middle as I'm going to get. Okay, now that's on the one inch, so I need it about there. Now, if it's not exact, you know what? I'm going to mark it with a pencil just so that. Uh, and get closer to where I want it. And I think I'm going to do it on the back here, like this. It's almost one and a quarter, actually, but it's still not going to do me. So we're going here, approximately. Approximately there. Sorry, it's a little awkward with the. I can't see either. <laughs> Not unless you want to see my big fat head in the camera. That's about good. So I'm just going to slide it down to make this part even and cut it off. Okay, so now I've done that. The next thing I want to do is I've taken some, this is just leftover craft text that I had, and I'm going to make a new spine. So what I want to do is I want to roll it over top of this as well. Um, just so it looks nicer on the top. And, and obviously I won't be able to do that on the bottom. But um, yeah, I want to do it like this. So I'm going to measure. I can't find my little... Oh, there it is. <clears throat> So the crease is here, and I want at least one inch there. So that's two inches that I want, plus I want this spine to be one and a half. One and a half should do it. Let's see. This has all the ephemera and everything in here as well. So that, that's why... I mean, it was alligator mouth, and I, I don't like books like that. So, yeah, one and a half is about what I need for that. I don't mind a little bit of puff, but not too, too much. Okay, so we've got uh, two inches plus an inch and a half, so that's three and a half on either side, right? So, well, in total, I should say. Um, three and a half looks like that, and I think that'll be good. So what I need to do is even this up better. Got issues, people. <laughs> okay. That's pretty even, actually, on the one side. So I will go three and a half. 
and I'm going to keep it doubled because I won't be able to cut it otherwise. And I'm going to go a little bit past that just in case I have to take some off to even up the other side. So for now, I'll just do that. Okay, so that's nice and straight. That cut really well. So then, three and a half. All right, I'm gonna have to take some off the bottom, but not right at the moment. So that is what it's going to look like. Let's mark that. One inch there. And one inch there. Well, that's going to go there. Be right. What did I do wrong? Yeah, that's not right. Oh, yeah, that was dumb. Anyway, it'll be like this. Okay. So I want the spine one and a half, which will be. Now you have to go on the inside because this is actually the hard part is on the inside here. One and a half. That's approximately there. Doesn't look like a huge difference, does it? But it will make all the difference in the world, I think. Just trying to get the front and the back overlap fairly centered. Okay, so then if I put these together like this, lining it up obviously, so that it's straight. Now, what I plan on doing is scoring on the top of this to give me that um, middle part. And then, <clears throat> I'm not gonna show any of this on camera, that's why I'm explaining it, just because I can't really. Um, I'm going to double tape on this side just this part like on the hard part so on this back side here I'll stick that down but on this side I'm going to use um, Mod Podge <clears throat> and then before I flip this side over once the Mod Podge is dry I'm going to stitch so that you'll see stitching on the outside of the book that's okay with me and then I will Mod Podge it again, and that'll just give it a little bit extra hold, I think. is That's my theory, and I'm sticking to it. So we'll see what happens with that. When I come back, uh, that'll be done, and then we'll move on to covering it with the papers and, and whatnot. Okay? Be back soon. Okay, so I've stuck the cardboard part down, and I've decided I'm going to fold this part up. So we'll only have one flap that uh, is flat. Um, <clears throat> so I've double-sided taped there. And then because I didn't want to tape, have that tape exposed, I just uh, lightly scored along the paper. And when I tore the back off the other, I just hold it down and, and rip. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and um, Mod Podge that down. I'm just, my brain is thinking ahead here. So I'm thinking I might need something heavy to place on that to keep that down.
So you're going to, if you're stitching, you're going to want to let this dry really well. Typically Mod Podge doesn't take too long to dry, but because I'm putting it on pretty thick, I don't want it tacky at all because it'll dull up my uh, needle. And then I just want to put this down here. Yeah, definitely going to need um, something on there to hold that down. I'm really trying to saturate the paper. eventually start to adhere. It's because it's thick, right? So it just takes a wee bit longer and I'm not afraid to use my fingers. <laughs> okay, you can tell that it, the paper's kind of softening and soaking up that glue. Now, if you still wanted to put something heavy on there so that, you know, you're, you you can walk away and go do something else, um, put some parchment down. I have just some scrap pieces of parchment. And then, you know, put something heavy on it, like another book or... In this case, I think I'll just stick this down on <laughs> it. It should be okay. I mean, it's stuck down pretty good, but I just want to make doubly sure. I do have a really heavy book, but I don't know what I did with it. It's somewhere. Anyway, I'll be back after this is dried, and then uh, I'll have stitched it, so I'll show you what I did. Okay, I'm just attaching the uh, paper cover. Make sure you use enough. I, I eyeball mine uh, prior to laying it down just so that I know where I want it somewhat. And then I just do my best to get it even, as even as I can get. Oop, that's not going to work for me. Hmm. Of course, before you lay it down, it looks fantastic, and then you go to lay it down, and not so much. Okay, there we go. Let's get that to the edge here. All right. I use a bone folder. I know a lot of people use brayers. I don't. They don't work for me. I feel like I can't um, push them hard enough. So I use a bone folder. I hope this is showing okay for you. Now, when you're doing your cover, the other thing you want to make sure is that you have printed this out on a cardstock. If you do this on paper, um, the paper saturates, especially if you're using uh, photo paper, it saturates with the glue and then it becomes soft. So then when you're pushing with your bone folder, you're going to tear it up. So I always print it on a photo cardstock matte finish. And just keep going over it. Rub your hands over it too because you'll be able to feel where there's 
maybe no stick or there's a little bubble. This feels pretty good. The other thing is if you're going to make it all out of the craft text, this on card gives it a little bit more weight for the cover. And then if you want, you can um, just use a colored cardstock for the back. And um, yeah, and you'll stabilize your craft text. So that's it. Now I'm going to show you what I did here. Let's see if I can get that in camera properly. So on the inside, I taped here first. You saw me do that and stick it down with some Mod Podge as well, the piece that I cut. Then on the inside, I taped on the edge all the way around this, having done the flip, the flat part on the bottom first, obviously, so that you can fold that back over. But I Mod Podge the center as well. And then you can get in there and really work it with your bone folder. This will soften over time this is a great product. I just absolutely love Craftex. Um, and if people are wondering, it's K-R-A-F-T-T-E-X. And I get mine from Amazon. You can buy it in a bolt or you can buy it um, smaller. It comes in different colors. And so what I want to do eventually is that, you know, work this so it softens up. And what I will do is I will tie this in. So there's a signature and it's biggie. It's a biggie. Um, but I want this to flatten more. Right now it wants to roll, but I want it to flatten. So I'm going to tie it here and here and get it to mold a little bit more. I'll have to put a closure on this for sure, but I think it's better than it was. It I definitely gave it, well, you I don't know if you can see that, but there, yeah, you can. That's how much I made it bigger. I, I could have gone bigger, but then, I don't know, would have looked really chunky. Now I'm not done. Um, I want this to dry and I don't know whether I'm going to paint the back, leave the back, or add paper to the back. I don't know yet. I have to wait and see what I want to do. But I do have to do the inside. I want to put, I think I had something cut out, but I'm not sure where I put them. I'll have to dig them out. Oh, I think I cut it up and used it for something else. <laughs> I might have to. I might have to dig something else out. Anyway, I'll find something and, you know, I'll add on to this video and yeah. So see you soon. Okay, so I've done the one side. Um, this is Blue Fern Studios paper and it's called Serendipity. And I just thought it went really nicely color-wise um, with the kit. So I'm going to do this side. And I start out by just cutting, it's a 12 by 12, so I start out by cutting it right in half. And then work from there because, you know, your back might measure a little different than your front. So you just kind of make the adjustments as you go. I wanted this pretty much to the edge, almost to the edge, just showing a little bit. And then in front of the bend. So now I can see this crease, so I wanted it in front of that bend. Uh, but I'll show you how I did this just because I, I know people think, well, it's just a slap dash kind of deal where you, you know, stick your glue down and, and you're good to go. Well, I'll show you a little technique that I use just so that you're really happy with the results um, when you're laying your Mod Podge down or your decoupage, either one works. They basically do the same thing. So I like to get it pretty saturated with the Mod Podge. This is a very thick cardstock that I'm laying down. If you've ever used Blue Fern, you'll know what I mean. Uh, it's probably a 90 pound weight, which is pretty heavy duty. And so it takes a little bit longer for the glue 
to uh, seep into the paper. And so you want to make sure that you have enough laying down or you're going to have problems. Um, and I, I go past where I know my paper's going um, generally just because I can wipe it back. But if you don't get it right to that edge, yeah, it's not going to stick easily. It will stick, but just you're going to have to really work for your dinner. <laughs> okay, so that's good. Make sure you've got it facing the right way. And I do. And Okay, that's good. Now, because it's really a lot of glue, uh, just rub it, hold it and rub it first, just to give it a little stick. Otherwise, the minute you put that bone folder to it from the first point, it will move. And then uh, you might not get it positioned where you want it. So I just go ahead and wipe the excess. There's going to be more as I use my bone folder. Let me get a clean piece of paper towel ready. So start in the center and really give it a good push. Okay. You want all the air bubbles out. You, you really do want to see that glue pop out the edge. Then you know it's right there, right on the edge. Okay, now this is where this bone folder is a Martha Stewart. It's an excellent bone folder for this. I use this curved part and run it along my edges. So what you're basically doing is you're turning that flat into a curve. And that looks so much better. So this tool really helps you do that, but keep it clean. Um, otherwise, you're going to have um, a bone folder that kind of, you know, stutters. It doesn't run smooth. And this is the part that's going to take a bit of work. It's much thicker along here. Underneath, I've got seams and whatnot. So this is the part that I'm really going to have to work at. So start it. And then don't forget your other sides. So that's the other part is I use the inside curve and run it along my edge. And I get that paper to turn down. And I'll try and hold that up nice and close once I get this done so you can see what I'm talking about. So now that's getting nice and soft, so it's taking up the glue. Now, if you're afraid that, okay, it's getting a little soft, take a piece of parchment. This one's got some glue on it. But take a piece of parchment and use that to run your bone folder over. Your parchment won't stick and then you won't take the chance of like rubbing a layer of paper off. So as you can see, it's not just stick it down and go. You really do need to work with it. You have to know your paper weight. There's no way you could rub it this much with um, just a regular paper. Uh, you'd, you'd have torn it by now for sure. And I know this because, <laughs> guess what? I've done it. Okay. Now, if there's any spots after that you feel need a little bit more glue, I go in with my Aileen's uh, because it's a nozzle, so I can kind of get it close and just squirt a little bit of glue in there. And then again, do the same thing with the bone folder and the parchment paper. And then, if you don't like 
you know, seeing this bit of glue. Once it's dried, I take this knife and I just, on the flat, I scratch at it. And it'll lift some of that up. And then just brush it away. And it does look better, it dulls it down as well. Now I can see that there's a spot that I did not get. So because this is nice and skinny, I can put a bit of glue on the tip of this and smear it in there. You can use a spatula, but clearly I'm lazy. <laughs> this is here, so I'm using it. So I'll wait till this is dried some more. I'll check it again later, see what's going on. But I wanted to show you the edge. Let's see if I can get up nice and close. Let's see if that camera will focus. You see how it, you can't really see, all you're seeing is the ink. You're not seeing like a thicker piece here because I've rolled it down and pushed it right against that cardstock or whatever you're using as your base for your cover. Okay, so that's done. I'm not going to put anything on the back. However, I may stencil the back. I'm not sure. Uh, I have a clear gel and I might just put a textured background on it. And this I will do up. Um, Yep, I'm not done, you guys, so I'll pause it here and continue. Okay, so I'm prepping for doing a bit of stenciling here. Now, what I'm going to try, <laughs> and I say that with tongue-in-cheek, is the Texture Paste by Ranger. I'm going to add some folk art. This one is called Rose something, Rose Chiffon. I'm going to mix them together because this texture paste is just clear shiny um, and I want color and I'm hoping it's going to be the right color. So I have a mixing dish here and I just use a palette knife and take a, a glob and then squirt some paint in there and hope for the best. Always a good idea to shake your paints, especially if they've been sitting for a while. Okay. That's a pretty color. Hopefully that'll do well. And then just take your knife and mix it together. See, now that's made that dull paint shiny already, which is what I wanted. If it's not quite the right color, I might add a touch of berry wine, just to give it a little bit more like what's in her dress. I think I will. Give me a second to find it. being really prepared. So this one is also folk art. Ah, not mixed enough. It's, I think it's a new one. It's been sitting a while. <laughs> 
So just remember if you're doing things like this, I know it seems like a waste, but put more than you think you're going to need because you're never going to get the color mixed the same way twice. Well, this is way more than I need, but I'd rather have too much than not enough. Okay, I think that's going to be okay. So using the back of my knife, I eyeball this, guys. <laughs> so I've taped down some parchment. I've taped this to the parchment so I can overlap it. Um, that's the best it's going to get. And I like doing mine rather spotty because it's probably going to bleed underneath. So I don't like going too back and forth. I try and avoid doing that. Um, and I try and go flat with it but don't always get what you want. And when it's wet enough, you can sort of clean it up a little if you need to, which I probably will need to. Yeah, I'm hoping that's worked. If not, I'll try again. So carefully lift it. Okay, it's not too bad. Now I need to take that tape off that side. And then use a paper towel on my craft mat. I'm just gonna blot it. Make sure there's none underneath it because when I lay it down, it's going to transfer that paint. Okay. Now I want to go up here. Just be careful you're not going to lay it on the already done one. Okay. not the best palette knife it's very movie so I try and put my finger on top of it just to stabilize it a little bit this is a Tim Holtz obviously you can see that One of my favorite ones. I like the distressed look to it. Oh, come on now. Scrape it up. Well, I might use most of it, so good. No waste, really. Okay. Now I'm going to pause you in a second because I need to uh, rinse that off right away or it's going to stick to my stencil and be a total nightmare to get off. So then I just run my palette knife along the edge, take the excess. Come on you. There you go. This side's pretty good. Okay, so then I can lift this away. I'm telling you, go to the dollar store and get parchment. It's the best thing you're going to use in your craft room. I don't want that there. I'm going to be covering some of this up with some more stuff. So this is going to go along the bottom of that. It's just a little lace piece. Uh, I think that's, I might do corners on it. Maybe not, because this is the book cover and it's really thick. 
So I probably won't do that now that I'm thinking of it. But I will have a probably a metal knob so that I have something to hold on to. But I'm also going to use some golden uh, acrylic and it's the gold mica flake in the small. So that's what it would... Come on, camera. There. It's tiny compared to... Like, they have a large flake, but I really like the small one. I'm going to put some of that in there, too, with a little bit of lace, and then I'm going to Mod Podge the whole thing, and that's it. Um, the back, I might do a stencil on the back. I might do the Harlequin um, down the back. Uh, with just clear. So I'll use this texture paste so it would have, uh, it'll be raised, but it'll be clear. I'm still debating on that, so I'm going to pause you. Okay, it's all dry, so now I'm going to add a little bit of this paste that has the flakes in it, gold flakes. I've had this stuff for a couple of years and I use it quite a bit and it, I still have like tons left. It goes a long way. So it goes on kind of creamy looking and then it dries clear. I'm not sure but I think I bought it at an art supply store. Okay, so we're going to just smear it on randomly. see I don't use very much but it does go quite a long way so I'm just gonna try and cover up some of the leakage and then when I'm done and um, everything's dry then I'll go over it with um, Mod Podge to seal it all. And again, make sure you wipe, wipe it off as soon as you can. And the reason you take it off your stencil is because if you get a buildup on your stencil, it's not going to be flat. And when you go to lay it down, it won't be flat, so things will go underneath it. Okay. So, I'm going to put this here to add a little something there. Now, I, I seem to recall I do have a top corner that I could add. Let me pause you, see if I can find it. Okay, I found these. I might change the color with alcohol ink, but these just sit on the top and then they look like corners, which I think might look kind of nice. But I don't really like that they're very dark. So, because they don't really show up, they don't really do much. But if I make them more gold, then that might work. And I can do that with my alcohol ink. Mm. I might put some in the back. Oops. I guess I had two. Didn't realize it. Yeah, so something like that. And I might end up adding a little bit of pearl. I don't have much in the way of bling anymore. I got rid of a lot of my stuff because I just was not using it. Now, I do have this, and that might look nice. 
I can also change the color with alcohol ink. Just a little bit of pearl there. So that'll look pretty, I think. Might go a little past the, uh, yeah, let's see. Let's cut it right there. I've cleaned my craft room, you guys, and I'm <laughs> totally trying to keep it that way. So as soon as I use something, I typically put it right back. Yeah, I think I think that'll look nice. Let me telephoto in and see what you think. Yeah. Something like that. I think I'm happy with that but I, I do want to change I'll change one only just to see if I like it and if I don't I'll do something different uh, so I'll be back okay I'm not sure I have the right one it says gold but I'm not sure if this is my old one I wasn't getting quite the gold I wanted I'm just gonna put it on a sponge and sponge it on yeah, this isn't the gold I wanted. I don't know what's wrong with that one, but it it just uh, stopped working. I think I'll just throw it out. Let's see if I can find my other one. Give me one second here. Um, I'm going to have to pause you because I can't find it. I'll be right back. Okay, I found it. I thought I, th <laughs> I thought I threw it out, but I didn't. Now, let's put that on there. The sponge works better when it's, you know, quite detailed, raised in spots. Um, the little tool doesn't work for in cases like that unfortunately. Okay, let's see if that made a difference in color. A little bit, not much. I'm wondering if I should just go with a color color. But what color? I know I have pinks. I'm going to fiddle with this one and I'll be back. Okay, I've pulled them all out. This one's called Pink Sherbert. I have no idea what I'll get if I use this. Unfortunately, because the background is so dark, it's uh, going to be hard to tell. Here's my comparison. Doesn't really look like anything. I might have to go really pink. Well, that's too pink. Oh, but now if I put the sherbet on top of it, now maybe it'll work. Let's see. all about play. Nope, don't like it. Well, that's a little better. see that you guys I don't know if you can I mean it definitely has a pink look to it but my problem is gonna be in getting the exact same color 
So let's see what else I have. I have ginger, currant. Hmm, ooh, what color currant would be? Oh my goodness. It's pretty dark. It's more of a burgundy. That might look nice though. Let's see what it does. And let's do it straight onto this one. Ooh, I like that. Oh, that's really nice. Okay. So, I'm trying to twist this so... That is nice. I like that. Get it nice and close. You can see the color. Just hit it with the heat gun a little bit just to dry it. So here's the original color. It just gives it a hint of a, almost a rose gold in a way, which is really pretty. Let's see what that looks like on top. Yeah, that's quite nice. Is I want to keep it in the brown tones because of my spine. So if I go with that, then I will also change the color of these. I, I use these a lot on my books and I like to cover the edges. Now this one I'm not worried about too much because it is a book cover. However, um, I still like the look. And what I do is bend these in half. So, my flat pliers. And I find the center. And then I bend it back like so. These are really pliable. You don't need to be Wonder Woman to do this. I mean, I don't have a whole lot of strength left in my hands anymore, and I can do it, so. And they won't be completely even. I don't know why. Probably the design of it, but it'll be close. And you won't tell because one will be on one side, one on the other. So then usually what I do, this one I would go this way with it um, instead of long way. I actually like this side better. But that's what I would do. I open it back up obviously and put it right through. And then I just put the Tim Holtz connector. And then I do the same on the back. So I would go ahead and, you know, alcohol ink. Let's do a flat one because it's easier. And I don't think there's enough on that. And we were using, where did I put it? I'll put it back. Current. Out because I'll need to. Oh, that's really, really pretty. It it kind of ages it. I don't know. I like it. <laughs> no explanations needed. I just like it. I'll have to do more of the uh, corner ones too. Okay, 
So we got that, that one. I mean, you can wear gloves so you don't get the ink on you, but yeah, I never care. It comes off eventually. Okay, that needs more. I don't know why I keep putting it away. <laughs> I messed up the other one. I think I got these from Butterbee Scraps. But she's no longer in Canada. She sold her company. So I don't order any more from them because it comes from California and takes so long for me to get it and it costs a lot more so <laughs> I have lots and I think I can get more on uh, Amazon anyway okay so let's see are they pretty close this one I think is well, I guess they're pretty close, aren't they? Yeah, okay, I'm happy. So, um, that's still drying my cover. I'm not done with that part of it. Let's see. Get that out of the way so that I don't mess with them. Okay, you probably can't see that now because I'm telephotoed in too close. Okay, so I think the sparkles are showing. I can't tell in that little monitor. It's very tiny. Um, it's pretty dry. This stuff dries fairly quickly. Uh, but before I attach this, I want to do my Mod Podge on there. So I don't know how you feel about watching me do that. It's rather boring. And I'm just using uh, the one I had going and it has lots on it. So I'm going to just use up what's on here. So I start fairly thick. I pounce. I like a um, kind of a canvas look and if you just lightly pounce with your foam brush that's what you get is that kind of look if you don't like brush strokes sorry I'm tripping over my tongue I can smell my dinner cooking and it just smells so good I'm doing crock pot ribs So this will kind of seal it from if you accidentally set your book down, you know, in a little bit of water, it won't ruin your your paper. Because like I said before, I do use photo paper. I have an HP printer and I use HP ink. And it's very good about holding. It's a color lock system, so it does hold the color. But if you got it fairly wet, no, it, it probably would ruin it because it is a photo paper.
as you can tell I go over the same spot a few times and just pick up the glue and move it around um, sometimes it's a little heavy in spots so I just keep pouncing till I'm happy with the look then of course I'll let this all dry now you could put um, while it's wet you could put your ribbon down I might have to get oh no I think I've got enough in the brush this does hold a lot of glue and I just roll it around and squeeze it out You can kind of tell when you're uh, viewing your paper uh, whether you've done it or not. It will show dull where you've missed. This does dry matte so it won't be super shiny because I don't really care for that look. But you know, you do what you do. And the reason I do this before I add my other stuff is because it is a glue so when I add more glue it seems to adhere better for me so that's kind of what I do now I'm just gonna squeeze out some extra glue here and lay that ribbon down push it down pretty good. Now I'm not going to do this yet because I might want to change the color of that a little bit. But then again I might not. I don't know. <laughs> what I might do is use that little piece that I had left over and try changing the color of that and seeing if I like it or not. I can sacrifice little pieces. I'm okay with that. There. I'm pretty happy with that. It's already drying in spots. Okay, there we go. Now she'll dry and she'll look like a canvas. Just get that down. We're having issues. I, I, a lot of my subscribers, they know that, you know, my mom's got cancer again, my mother-in-law. And uh, she's in the hospital right now. Um, she's got other issues so they're trying to get her stable and um, because of the virus um, she was in emergency for like three days then they decided that they needed to admit her into a room well now that they've admitted her into a room my husband can't go visit her. and he didn't find that out they didn't tell him he went up to the hospital to go see her and she wasn't there and they wouldn't let him in so she had a meltdown yesterday because he wasn't there to visit her and uh, so he's worried that she's going to be freaking out again um, anyway we're trying to see if we can conference call her uh, but she's not picking up through Facebook Messenger <laughs> and she knows how to use it because her sister calls her that way all the time and for some reason she's not answering and we don't know why but anyway it's it's an ongoing thing so I'm gonna s pause it here I'm gonna wait for all that to dry then we'll finish off uh, the book and then that'll be where I end it until the flip through I'm not going going to um, tape the uh, sewing it in because I do have a video on how I do that and um, it's too hard for me to do it I need to have my work close to me when I do it so then I can't film you wouldn't see it anyway anyway we'll talk soon okay so I've decided that I'm going to just Mod Podge the back for now I might do a stencil over top of it with the uh, texture paste from Rangers but in the meantime I just want to seal the back paper So 
So I don't know if this shows, but I, I swipe it on first just to make sure everything's covered and then go over it with a pouncing motion. I don't add more to it. Uh, I just use what's in the brush. I don't like it too, too thick. Uh, but make sure you go over your seams. Like if you stop in one spot, then, you know, um, when you're doing another spot, then just go back over it. And if you don't like what's happening, if you've got too much or you see sometimes you get little bubbles and if you don't really want that then as it's drying you can go back over with the sponge without adding more just knock it back and um, that generally takes care of it it's not a perfect science of course but I do prefer the look and I will go over um, the spine as well. Just so it matches. It doesn't really need it um, because the craft text you can actually get it wet. Um, you can start with it wet really uh, depending on what you're making with it. I mean you can do wallets and purses and you can make all kinds of things with this stuff. But I'm going to lightly do it just because it'll kind of match up with the rest. So I'm, I'm not using a ton here. Just a little. And because the Craftex has texture already, I may not need to pounce it. I might just lightly swipe it. Making sure it's not too thick in spots. So typically the cover takes me like a day. <laughs> this has been days. Um, we've had a lot of family problems with uh, Ken's mom. So we've been back and forth to the hospital and whatnot. I actually had somebody, I guess, Probably not a subscriber, because my subscribers are awesome. Left a comment on one of my videos, and anybody who follows me and has for a while knows, I chat. That's what I do. And they left a comment like, uh, something like, um, we don't need to know about your personal business, just, you know, do your video. <laughs> <laughs> and it was pretty rude. <laughs> yeah, basically, I told her to find another channel then because I'm not changing the way I do things. I did it in a very nice way, of course. But now I'm leery. I'm thinking maybe people aren't telling me that uh, they really don't want me to keep talking. <laughs> so I'm not saying too much, you guys. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Now I have to let this dry. So you can see I've done the corners, on the front at least, and this is on there. This isn't moving. And I just did that with the Mod Podge while it was wet. I just stuck it down. This I did with, let me just put my brush in a bag because I don't want it to dry out. So this brush I've used several times. So all I do is, you know, um, Ziploc bag, but I roll it first to the point where I get most of the air out. Close it. If I can. Leave a little bit open at the end so when you roll it, that'll push the air out. 
and then close it up. That's it. Lasts a long time. I hate waste. Okay, so I've done the corners and I've used this glue. Now, I got this at the PE. Um, and I'm in British Columbia, if, you, if you're just tuning in and don't know anything about me. I'm in Canada. Um, this was at an exhibition that I got this. And the distributor here is here. But it says made in the U.S. So I'm not sure, but you can maybe um, Google this. Or if you're happy with Gorilla Glue, I, I use Gorilla Glue as well. Um, it, it's basically like, you know... What's that other glue that's been around for mega years, ever since I was young, actually? Uh, it's pretty much the same as that kind of stuff. But this works on rubber and metal, and it works on a lot of different things. Uh, and you need very little of it. So then, once I've done the back, then I bought these. I love tool shopping with my husband. <laughs> so we go into this awesome tool shop. These are really fun firm. They're not like your dollar store kind of deal and they're not like the um, I guess they're like a what are they a binder clip. These are much stronger and they're plastic so they're not going to um, cut into anything and I just put three. Um, I have three or four of these and and I just leave them for you know like an hour. It doesn't really take that long but I like to leave it on there. And um, yeah, I walk away and go do something else and come back and it's all stuck down and it's not moving. So I'm liking the back um, just like that. You can see it's almost all dry already. Um, and I like the front, but I do need to add something else. So I thought I would put a little, it's a very light pink ribbon. And then on top of the pink ribbon, I'll probably add that. Now, this is going to be the tricky part because the ribbon is satin. And when you put glue under it, you're going to see the glue marks. So your best bet is to cover the whole back in glue. So it looks even, one color. And I'll probably do the same on the top. I'm just going to use Mod Podge and then I'll stick the little... Um, pearls on top of that. I'm not going to change the color of the pearls. I want them to stand out. I think because they are the only thing on the page that's white, I think they stand out. So that'll be my next thing. I've gone ahead and colored my edges. I haven't decided whether I'm doing them like that or doing them like that. I kind of, I mostly do them like this. I like that look very much. Uh, and in which case, I'll probably put the whole, actually I might even do that. And that way I can use the hole for my hitch post and just bend the rest back. Don't cut it off because you'll never get it where it isn't sharp. Bend it back. Um, and you probably won't even need to glue that back. Just bend it back. So I'll do that on the front and on the back. It'll go here as well. Um, and then what I do, this one I'll probably do only halfway. And what I do is I add two eyelets. So I'll probably go through these holes that are already there. Um, and then I string my uh, cord, the elastic. So I just use hair bands, basically. So that's next. And then this is done. And then the next time you see it, it will all be sewn together and I will do a flip through. So, yeah, I hope that's what you guys were looking for. Um, I had a lot of requests for me to show you how I do my covers. So that's how I do my covers. Thanks for watching, you guys. Talk to you soon.